Okay, on section 2.3, we are going to learn about lines. So we're going to learn a lot about lines. The slope-intercept form of a line, y equals mx plus b. We're going to learn how to graph lines. We're going to learn how, when we have two equations, how to tell whether the lines are parallel or perpendicular. We already know how to do it. If there's points, we find the slope of the points. But now we're going to be given equations and we'll be able to look at the equations and tell whether they're parallel or perpendicular. And then last, we're going to learn how to write the equation of a line. And we're going to learn how to write it using y equals mx plus b. And we're going to learn how to write the equation of a line using slope-intercept form. So long section, five pages, but there's a lot of stuff in it. So buckle up. So slope-intercept form, this is a definitely another highlighter moment, is y equals mx plus b. And if I could pick one thing that students remember more from high school than anything else, it would be y equals mx plus b. They don't really know what it means sometimes, but they remember that formula, y equals mx plus b. So it's called the slope-intercept form for a reason, because it gives you the slope, which is m, and it gives you the y-intercept, which is 0b. So take that constant off the back, put it in the y slot, because y-intercept, remember, always has x as 0. So x is 0, and then the y-coordinate is b. And that's why it's called the slope-intercept form, because it gives you the slope and y-intercept of the line. <clears throat> So looking at this example, m is always what's in front of the x. So I look in front of the x and I go, oh, there's my m. It's two-thirds. That means my slope is two-thirds. Oh, and look at that constant back there. That's my y-intercept. So I'll, since a y-intercept always has x zero, it's zero comma whatever that number is, which is seven. So I know... This line crosses through the y-axis at 0, 7. I know it has a positive slope, which means the line will be rising. And to get extra points, I'm going to rise 2, run 3, make a point. Rise 2, run 3, make another point. And that's how I graph this line. So I start with the y-intercept, and then I do my rise and run from that point and get several other points. So first, let's just practice dissecting. So find the slope and y-intercept. So remember, slope is m. So we write slope is m equals, and we look right in front of the x term. So right in front of the x term is 1 fourth. And keep in mind, because graphing is going to be our next thing, is this is the rise one run four because we're going to need to know that and the y-intercept which we learned in previous sections and pre previous classes always has x zero so that's the first thing make x zero and then you pull this constant because it doesn't have an x it's called a constant at the end and it's sine so that means this graph crosses the y-axis at 0, negative 7, and to plot additional points, we rise 1, run 4, plot a point, rise 1, run 4, plot a point, and so on. So now we have enough information in order to graph it. So if you want to try the next one, go ahead and shut off the video and try it. This one's a little bit harder, so that's why I thought about the next one. So go ahead and shut it off if you need to, and or not need to, want to. And then turn it back on and we'll compare. Okay, so this one doesn't have a number at the end. That means there's a zero. So this is really y equals 3x plus a zero. So if there's no number there, we can assume it's zero. So our slope is always what's in front of the x. It's called the coefficient of x, so it would be 3, or even better, is write it as 3 over 1, because remember, we're going to be graphing in the next section. So that tells us the rise is 3, the run is 1. If you just write 3, you might think there isn't a run, 
So I always write the whole numbers over 1. The y-intercept always has x0, so that's the first thing I do is make my x0. And then I look here and go, oh, it's the origin. That means this graph crosses the origin, 0, 0. That's the first point. And then to find the additional points from the origin, you're going to rise 3, run 1, plot a point. Rise 3, run 1 more, plot a point, and so on. Okay, so this next one's not quite so easy. Can anybody tell why? Is it in the form y equals mx plus b? No, it's not. So we don't know what the um, slope is. We don't know what the y-intercept is. We have to make it look like this before we can tell anything. And look like this means get y alone on the right-hand side. So there can't be anything on the, excuse me, get y alone on the left-hand side, move everything else to the right-hand side. So nothing can be in front or with that y except for a 1. So let's take a look at this and ask ourselves, hmm, how can I get y alone? Well, Here's my y term. So when I teach this in the previous classes, I say cover up the y term because you don't want to move that. You want it to stay there, but you need to move everything else. So this is where your previous knowledge from solving equations comes in. So to move the x to the other side, I have to do the opposite because I'm crossing the equal sign. So the opposite of plus 2x is subtract 2x. It's not a like term with 9, so don't put it underneath the 9 because you don't want to accidentally add those. This has an x. This does not. So 2x minus 2x is 0. So look, and I'm gradually getting my y alone. And we always tell students you want it in the form y equals mx plus b. So at this step, switch these around. So this 2x is negative, so move it up front. And this 9 doesn't have a sign, so that means it's positive. Put it at the back. Because y equals mx plus b, the number is at the back. So I'd like to say we're done, but we're not quite done. Because y is not completely alone yet. It is being multiplied by negative 5. So think about what you learned in the very first sections. First day of class. You learn that if you want to get something alone, you do the opposite. The opposite of multiply by negative 5 is divide by negative 5. And I have to divide every single term. I don't get to pick and choose. So every term all the way across gets divided by negative 5. So we're getting closer, aren't we? Two negatives equal positive. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so there's my y alone. 1y is the same thing as y. And I have to be careful all the way down because signs matter, everything matters, because this is what's giving me my answers. So 2 negatives equal a positive, so that slope is going to be 2 over 5x. And if you leave the negatives in it, it is wrong, so be careful minus, and you could change that to a mixed number, you could, um, yeah, that'd probably be better because you're going to be graphing. So the first thing I do is I figure out the sign. A positive divided by a negative is negative. Because remember how I told you the calculator won't let you plug a negative in the denominator? So I did the sign first. So then all I have to type in the calculator is 9 fraction bar 5. And it tells me it's 1 and 4 fifths. If I do 9 fraction bar negative 5, it's going to give me the error. Like I said, the calculator does not want negatives in the denominator. So that's why I did the sign first. A positive divided by a negative is negative. Then I typed in 9 fraction bar 5 and got 1 and 4 fifths. 
So my sign's already there, and I can just put my fraction in now. So now I'm finally ready to answer the question asked by the problem. Find the slope, find the y-intercept. So my slope is what's in front of the x, which would be 2 over 5. And my y-intercept is always a point. And x is always 0 on the y-intercept, just like on the x-intercept, y is always 0. On the y-intercept, x is always 0. And then I pull the number at the end, including its sign, negative 1 and 4 fifths. And that is the two questions they were asking me. Find the slope, find the y-intercept. So notice it's not always just given to you like on these two. Sometimes, a lot of times, you have to do the work to find it. So being able to solve an equation, what we learned on the first day of class, is super important. So you got to remember that whole opposite thing. Anytime you cross the equal, you do the opposite to bring things over. And we did that twice. So opposite of plus 2x is minus 2x. The opposite of negative 5 times y is divide by negative 5. And you have to be super careful with your signs. You miss one sign and the whole line will be wrong when you go to graph it in the next section. So be careful with the with your algebra. So this next little piece tells us how we're going to graph these. I'm trying to get everything in there. So if we're graphing a line using the slope and y-intercept, which we just found. So I use the same example from above. So the slope is what's in front of the x, rise 2, run 3. And I do like to write that beside it to remind myself, rise over run. Because sometimes students do it backwards, so I always say it's alphabetic order. Rise first, run second. And this number here at the end, 0, 7, is the y-intercept. So our first point is to plot 0, 7. And then from the y-intercept, you do your rise and your run. So rise 2, run 1, 2, 3, gives us this point, and... I do require straight edges when you take paper pencil tests. <clears throat> so I think you should practice because you guys are going into Math 150 after this and your teacher will require a straight edge. So every line goes on forever in both directions unless it's associated with a word problem. So use your straight edge to draw a straight line and then you put arrows on both ends to indicate that it goes on forever. And usually on a paper pencil test, I'll ask you to do at least three points. So I can see here I'm running out of graphs so I can go backwards. So the opposite of rise two and run three would be go down two, go back three, and you could get your third point. So rise two, run three, you run out of graphs, so then do the opposite. The opposite of rise two is go down two, the opposite of run forwards is run backwards three. So you don't ever have to worry about running out of graph. Then you just shift gears and do the opposite to get those other points. So y-intercept first. And then from the y-intercept, you do your rise and your run to get your additional points. Pretty easy stuff, huh? Okay, so we just have 30 seconds left, so I'll end the video, and we'll start the next page on the next video.